Hi, I'm James. I'm David. Today we're going to show you how to install a 15 kW solar converter paired with a 70 kWh Rubik's battery bank. It's easy. Let's do it. Rubik's Battery is based in Sugar Creek, Ohio. We have a background with off-grid solar installations. We understand that using solar systems as your prime power comes with a lot of challenges, and we're confident that our product will step up and perform for you. This is our testing lab, where we run our product through some rigorous tests, including short circuit, surge testing, compatibility with various brands of inverters, and ultimately, we want to make sure our batteries will do the job for you. Okay, let's start with the lid and the base, show you what's inside. This cable can also be used for stack to stack batteries, so we have two stacks in this case. It'll be used for the internal communications. This is the lid, it's gonna go on top of the stack. Let's just put this aside for now. Here we have the base unit. And look at these cool casters. So the batteries are on wheels. We've got heavy duty casters on the bottom. They do have brakes. Once they're stationary, you can just lower the brakes and she ain't going nowhere. So here we have the uh, bus bar and the battery to battery communication cable uh, included with the rabbit shutdown terminal and some grounding hardware. Batteries have convenient handles, easy stacking. Each battery has a pin system, so when we stack the next battery on top, it's staying right there. So we can stack up to seven tall, and then we have a nice lid that goes on the top just to finish everything off. In the lid, we have grommets you can take your cables out of the top. We also have grommets so you can take your cables from the bottom. There's a magnetic back panel, super easy to take them off. So we're going to remove all the terminal covers. We do have our own terminal cover mold to make the perfect terminal cover. It's easy to work with, safe, effective, easy to use. Each battery includes a super heavy duty bus bar for positive, negative, and we have a grounding bus bar. So with the base and lid, there's a little ground bar included, and that's gonna be to ground your lid once you put that on. Put on backwards to create a uh, nice flat surface for the grounding bar to rest against. The reason for offsetting the bus bars, every other one, is to uh, basically allow them to sit flush and flat. Uh, so we'll basically allows for uh, nice flat surfaces to meet up against each other. If your local code requires rapid shutdown, each battery is equipped with a rapid shutdown terminal. Basically, it's a two-wire terminal. You only need to connect to the master battery, and if the two wires or two terminals touch each other, the battery will shut down immediately. So all the bus bars are on, and we're going to put these covers on again. Okay, now we're going to connect the battery to battery communication cables. Uh, these cables, it's a standard Cat5 uh, included with each battery. Start at the bottom, which was our master battery. Uh, we'll go from the out port, the in port on the next battery, continue on the, uh, the daisy chain network. So we got all our battery to battery connections in place for communications on both stacks. Now we'll use our standard Cat5 cable to take uh, the uh, stack on the right here. Um, the master battery will be at the bottom. These are all configured uh, as far as the addressing 
on the front side of the screen. So we got the master, zero, one, two, three, so on and so forth. We'll come out of the last battery in the first stack, connect to the uh, top battery on the second stack. So we'll plug in to the last battery in the first stack, on the out port, battery out, and we'll feed this through the uh, cable glands. And we'll connect it to the next battery in the uh, battery order, which would be the top battery in the, the uh, second stack. And these batteries can, you can start at the bottom or the top. Uh, the addresses are configurable. Uh, however, these this cabling needs to go uh, in sequential order. Battery six at the top, and then seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So now we'll use the Cat5 cable that's included with the lid and base to connect the closed loop communication to the inverter. Uh, so the inverter port that's labeled CAN, uh, we'll plug it in there and then we'll show you in a little bit on where to plug it in on the Solar converter. So now we're going to attach the big old three odd cables. We're going to be running one set to each stack and then the Solark has dual terminals. So that'll make it really easy. And with the heavy duty bus bars that are included with each battery, we are okay with just taking off from the bottom terminals and not having to do cat a corner. So we are bringing the cables in through cord grips, inch and a half cord grips, and through the Solarx knockouts. And stack number one is connected. We're almost there. Cables are attached, we are tightening them up. We will be ready to roll. And be sure to take a torque wrench on that yet. So we got our Cat5 cable for closed loop communication to the Solark here. And uh, we have uh, 3D printed a uh, Cat5 adapter. Um, so we'll plug it in right here. This actually connects to the top side. It's just a jumper Cat5 cable going to the uh, closed loop com port. If for, for some reason you guys have conduit running to the Solark, this uh, adapter uh, would not be needed. This is something we just printed in-house. Uh, it would be available on request. We are ready to turn on the batteries. First of all, we're going to make sure the solar breakers are off. We'll get to that last. Now we're going to go through and turn on each individual battery breaker. And this is the fun part. We are ready to fire things up. Breakers are on. We're going to go to the switches, little red on and off switches. No explosions so far. And they're on. We are ready to put on the covers and push them in place. We'll go through and set all the addresses on the batteries. So this will be our master battery. It'll be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. And seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. We'll go to the master battery, load uh, showing the home screen. You got your battery voltage, amperage, your wattage, and your battery status. Uh, any kind of faults, uh, short circuit protection will show up here uh, as well. You got your uh, per battery percentage. These battery percentages will synchronize across all the uh, batteries. Uh, once we have all the addresses set up, these are all 64%, being that they're new, out of the box, and when they ship, they're all relatively the same percentage. So we go to the settings button. The password is 7777, four sevens. And we will select Solar. Uh, if we hit the uh, checkbox, you can actually uh, set the max charge voltage here. That's set to 57.6. Uh, grid tie applications that uh, the manual will specify uh, the actual charge voltage, but we would recommend dropping that uh, just a little bit lower, right around 57. Okay, so we'll check the Solark. So we will select the Solark as our option. If we select that, um, we'll need to put 57.6. We can enter the battery charge voltage, the max charge voltage that will be communicated to the Solark. We have it selected and the master battery will be zero. There's also fault codes that you can access from the, uh, the history of each fault code and the number of times it happened. Uh, there's a clear button. We have each individual cell voltage, uh, the, the differential between the lowest cell and the, also the highest cell, and then also the min and the max cell voltages for diagnostics. 
uh, all the temperatures within the battery pack and also the BMS. So we'll go through and set all the addresses. The next one will be one. One feature we added recently to our LCD, uh, these LCDs will stay on. Uh, so you can see the percentage from a distance, uh, the battery percentage. Uh, however, after uh, two minutes, they will uh, dim down to save the LCD um, backlight. Or you can also push and hold the LCD and it will turn off. And it won't turn back on until you actually tap it. Um, so one way to uh, save the LCD long term would be to turn these off by tapping and holding. All right, we are all set. We are ready to turn it on. We are gonna turn on the breakers on the Solark. The LCD will start lighting up here in a second. And we have got power. And now the only thing that we still have to do is set some parameters on here and we are all set. Okay, we got the Solar 15K inverter powered up. We got our closed loop battery communications connected. Now we'll go through and uh, configure the uh, closed loop communication settings. Go to settings page, go to battery setup, and we'll check the BMS lithium battery and that will enable the closed loop communications. Make sure you hit OK. Now we'll see a lithium battery information page and it is communicating the actual battery voltage from batteries, the uh, current uh, combined pack current. So all the batteries combined is, is drawing right around one amp. Battery temperature and the actual state of charge state of health and the nominal install capacity so these are uh, 1400 amp hour modules which uh, combined is 1400 amp hours and here is the battery charge voltage um, that the inverter, inverter will charge the batteries at and it's also set the uh, charge current limit to 980 amps this charge is 1260 and that will change automatically based on the number of batteries you have installed and uh, connected through close to com. So we'll exit out of that page, we'll go to battery setup, and uh, we can now go to the charge tab. We can see that our battery charge voltage has been communicated to the inverter successfully. So now we will set the uh, max charge and discharge current for the uh, batteries. So we'll turn this all the way up to 275 amps. In this case, uh, the Solar converter will not be able to uh, max out the uh, charge and discharge current being that we have 14 batteries installed. So on the battery setup tab, uh, here it's set to percentage uh, based and it'll use the SOC, the percentage coming out of the battery, to determine when to uh, charge and discharge the battery. The generator charge and ridge charge settings will be set based on the application. Uh, you need to refer to the uh, uh, Solark tech support per application on that. So it looks like all our uh, battery uh, communications are working and our max discharge and charge amperage is set appropriately. We obviously want to have this lower than the maximum charge current that you will see in uh, the battery info tab. Here we have 980 amps uh, for charge and 260 for discharge. So at this point, um, the inverter is showing the uh, state of charge from the batteries and it uh, should function as intended. Thank you very much for watching our video of connecting a 70 kilowatt hour Rubik's battery bank to a Solar 15K inverter. We're coming to your house next. If you want more information, be sure to check out the link below.